Like, how can someone build a, a, an audience like he has? And that's that's his level of intellect when he talks about challenging issues is, well, if it's not what I want it to be, then it, doesn't, then it shouldn't exist and it's nothing and it means nothing now. All right, so we've got Matt Walsh here who was on the Joe Rogan experience. Now, the first, I'll say this, I'm not a huge Matt Walsh fan. I think he's a condescending prick, but I'm a condescending prick, so maybe I see part of myself in him, not sexually, but like, you know what I mean? I see a part of myself reflected back at me from him because he's a condescending douche and uh, I can be too, but that's, you know, that's a part of myself I don't love and a part of him that I don't love either. Um, For the first hour and a half or so of this podcast, super reasonable, talking about trans stuff, kids transitioning, stuff that we can all get on board with. He brought up marriage five or six times as something that the left is trying to attack um, to degrade society, which I was waiting for Joe to say something, waiting, 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 waiting. And finally, he said something about marriage. And I think Joe, as a, as a pretty good interviewer, waited till later because he knew he was going to get sucked down a rabbit hole here. And I haven't watched this. The, the whole thing of them talking about marriage is about an hour, and it was actually pretty painful. I recommend you guys go to Spotify, listen to Joe Rogan talking about this um gay marriage stuff with Matt Walsh. It's really, honestly, I felt bad for Matt because he wasn't in a, he's usually sitting around in a circle with a bunch of other white dudes talking about how uh, Western society has been degraded by the left smoking cigars and whatever. He's not have somebody like, he doesn't have millions of people like this. This clip has 2.3 million views in two days. Right. So, and then don't tell me how many millions of people heard this on Spotify. So we've got a really interesting situation here where it's like he didn't, he was on his heels the whole time. and It was really embarrassing to watch. Like, I don't, again, I don't like Matt Walsh. I just don't. And Ben Shapiro has been in a similar situation here where it's like, when you articulate this and someone's like, hey man, like that's dumb. And that's, that it makes, it, it, it's the reason we can't trust conservatives like this. The reason we can't trust as a society say, hey, we're going to have a common sense conversation. We're going to sit down and we're like, hey, like both sides have gone too far. It's a little bit too much. Let's get off the slippery slope and make some common sense. Just have some common sense discussions here. All right. Around certain things in our society that have, gotten out of hand, but these motherfuckers will not stop. They want it all. They have zero interest in being just another religion, just another belief system, which is where they belong in our culture, by the way, is just another belief system. That's it. Well, the founding fathers were baptized. Founding fathers were baptized because they were forced to be baptized because it was legally required in the colonies. Okay. They were mostly deists, which means relatively agnostic and spiritual. And philosophers. They were philosopher types. They weren't. I don't give a shit what Charlie Kirk says. Charlie Kirk is a fat loser. Okay? His face has gotten rounder and rounder as he's gotten more and more conservative. It's disgusting. Dude needs to go to the f-ing gym. Jesus Christ. But anyways, don't listen to fat losers, guys. Um, I just can't. I, I can't see how people think this is f-ing reasonable. I can't. But let's play it, and we'll get into it. I think of marriage is, is a certain thing, which is the... Um the context for, uh, for procreation, for the, for the, the building of the, the nuclear family. What about people that get married that don't have kids? Are you opposed to that? What if they get married, they decide, you know what, we don't need kids. I'm going to get fixed. You get your tubes tied. Let's travel the world. Well, what do you mean am I opposed to it? I mean, I, I think that, uh, that every married couple should be open to life. But what if but, they don't want to? Are you opposed to them being married? If marriage is only for procreation and to bond a family together, what about people that are deeply in love that never want to have children? I don't think it's, it's not only procreation, but that is one of the fundamental definitional uh, uh, aspects of it. Uh, of course, there's more to marriage just than that. And what about people that- So are- Matt Walsh thinks if you get married and decide not to have kids, for whatever reason, that should be frowned upon, right? Because you're pro-freedom, right? Pro-freedom, guys. Um, thinks that you should be looked down on culturally for not having children. They're infertile they fall in love and they realize that they can't have babies. They don't really necessarily want to adopt. Is that okay for them to be married? Because then you're, by definition, marriage falls into a completely different thing because then it's a bond of love. It's a union of love. Sure. I mean, that doesn't change the nature of of marriage though. It's it's a little bit like- Oh, uh, see, no, it does change the nature of marriage, Matt. And here's why. I can't have children naturally. I was born for whatever reason without vast deference. Um, I've done some research on why that may be. And there's a variety of reasons, none of which have anything to do with me as a person. So I can't have kids naturally. And you believe that life begins at conception, which means, so you say that if I don't have children, I should be frowned upon, right? But me going through the process of having children requires IVF. IVF means that we have to fertilize numerous embryos in order to get one or two 
right? Implanted that takes that turns into a child. Based upon your philosophy and your belief system that you want to project onto the entire country as if it's your right to do so, I would not be able to do that because you believe life begins when an egg meets a sperm. So I would not be able to have children. The child that I'm about to have would not exist if, uh, if, if we allowed you to project your beliefs onto our society, legislatively, right? In numerous places around the country, thanks to people like you, Matt, there will be people that are not allowed to have children who have fertility issues. And do you, do you see that as being wildly inappropriate, right? We had seven embryos make it through out of like 15 or something that got put together. Seven. We're going to have two children. In Matt's logic, in Ben Shapiro's logic, me and my wife, in the pursuit of having a couple of kids, are going to kill five children. Interesting. Now, I would love to donate those to somebody else who struggles. And if we can do that, we can do that. But that may not be the case. So Matt would say, yeah, you murdered five children. And you shouldn't be able to have children for X, Y, and Z reason because you were born without vast deference. That's, but also I should be looked down upon for not having children. Interesting. Um, I say that, uh, uh, what's the definition of a woman? Well, a woman is someone who by her nature can conceive children in her womb and bear children. And then the response is always, well, what about women who are infertile? Does that, right. does that destroy your definition of woman? And uh, it, it doesn't because you know, it, it's still, it's still a woman's nature to bear children. Not every woman will, and there will be disease and infertility and, and old age and all these things that will preclude that, but it's still, it's still of her nature to do so. Um, and I would say the same thing for marriage. I mean, it's, it's, it is natural in a marriage for, for procreation to occur. It's not always going to happen in reality though, but that's still, that's still one of the natural functions of marriage and, and, uh, married couples who can't conceive children. There are other ways to, um, be parents like adoption, for example, if they want to. Right. But if people want to be married and don't want to ever have children, are you opposed to them being married? I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't advocate a law that would prevent it. But would it change the definition of what their marriage is to you because they don't want to have a family. They just want to have a loving bond. I think this will be a, a couple that is rejecting uh, one of the fundamental aspects of marriage, and they they should be they they should be open to to life. I would hope that in the future they would be, but but isn't that just a personal choice? I mean, you can have a very fulfilling life if you just follow your pursuits and your dreams and your your interests, and you find someone that shares those interests with you, and you share time together. It's very fulfilling yeah, it's and a, loving. Yeah, it's a it's a pers- it's a personal choice, and that I'm, I'm not advocating for like a law that says that you you if you're married you have to have you have to have X number of kids. Um, but then why are you opposed to two gay people doing that? <laughs> well, because, because again, it's, it's, it's not about choice. It's about what this institution, marriage is an institution, and what is it, and what purpose does it serve? And I, I, I do not agree with um, tearing down or, or, or changing this definition, especially because the people who have changed the definition haven't come up with a new one. So they, they say, well, that's not what marriage is. So for thousands of years, we said marriage is the procreative union. And then we had the other side that came along and said, well, it's not that. Okay, well then, like, what is it exactly? And I know you said, well, it's, it's people who love each other. Two people love each other. Well, but then why two people? Why do they have to love each other? Um, you know, all these kinds of questions. And you get into, you know, what if they're, they're in the same family? What if brothers and sisters want to marry? And I know every time that comes up, you know, the, the advocates for gay marriage will say, well, that's a slippery slope argument. That's a fallacious, but it's actually not. It's like, we're trying to get to what do you even think this institution is now since you've rejected out what we were saying it was. And, um, and I've never found a, a compelling definition. I and just, any, any, def, any definition offered, it's like, it's like well, what are you, what are you, what's even the point then? Why, why, just, why do we even need this now? I just don't see how a gay marriage in any way damages a straight marriage. I don't, I don't see it at all. It doesn't make any sense to me. It just seems to me that people want to be... Bu- look, if you, if you wanted to look at logic, especially in our modern society, which is pretty f***ed when it comes to relationships, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% of all marriages end in divorce anyway. They don't make it. You know, if, well, I don't know if anything would damage marriage and damage the institution of marriage. It's the option of divorce. I don't think gay people and gay people getting married in any way, shape, or form changes a bond that you have with your wife. It's just called marriage. It's a human invented thing. If we decide that gay people can get married too, I just don't see how it damages anything. I don't think it tears down the definition of marriage in any way. It just opens up the possibility that people who are gay won't be discriminated against. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that a, a gay couple existing uh, directly impacts, you know, there's a gay couple and, you know, wherever, and, and I'm with my wife in, in our house. Like, obviously right. there's not... 
Um, but I'm talking about, I'm not talking about on the, on the individual level, I'm talking about on the, on the, the societal level. Right. I would agree that um, divorce, especially, uh, you know, uh, there's no fault divorce, rampant divorce. I don't think it's as high as 50%. I know that that's, the, that's often quoted. I'm not sure where that comes from, but um, it is high. It's like, it's too high. And, and Chris I, and, Rock has a great joke about that. He and, said those are just the people with the courage to get out. It's like, how many cowards stay? But it's also, it's also true that the advocates for what we call now traditional marriage, which I just call marriage, but the advocates for traditional marriage put themselves at a disadvantage by allow, especially in the churches, like allowing this rampant divorce to occur. Um, and then you've, you've already <laughs> sort of given up on some, a marriage is supposed to be monogamous and, uh, and permanent as well as procreative. Well, you've given up monogamy and permanence. And so now it's not, that's, that's, that's two of the three legs gone. And so now this assault was waged on the procreative part of it. You guys understand this is a pro freedom person, right? And that's the thing. I wish Joe would jump in here. Cause here's what, here's, here's what I would say. I wish I could like call into the Rogan set show and say, listen, man, here's the thing. <laughs> like you and your culture and your religion and all the, like, that's, here's the thing. I'm a pro freedom guy. Okay. An actual pro freedom guy. This guy, Matt Walsh has the freedom to live in a community, to be a part of a community, to be a part of a religion that views marriage a certain way. Right. Because at the end of the day, he says, well, marriage was this. It's like, well, marriage, if you go back, if you keep, when you, depends on when you decide when history starts, right? For some places, marriage was a, a business transaction for the parents of these two people to be able to increase their power, standing, whatever, right? It wasn't about love at all. It was an arrangement, right? In different cultures, it was an arrangement, right? It's, we've, we've made it different things. It evolved. Marriage has evolved so much. Pair bonding has evolved so much in the past 2,000 years, hundreds of years. Is it, like, it's just, it's shifted. So at the end of the day, the fact of the matter is, and facts don't care about your feelings, is that marriage means different things through different cultures. And so in a place like the United States, which is not a race or a single culture, but is a melting pot of different cultures, which you, for whatever reason, in your own hubris, think you are the top of, right, in the hierarchy of being a Judeo-Christian believer, you have placed yourself atop this hierarchy that you created, right, which is unfair and unjust and anti-freedom. Um, from this position, you think that you need to project the, your views on what marriage is on the rest of the world because you believe that your views are correct. What I would say is that for your culture and the culture you choose with the freedom you have, your community can make marriage whatever they want it to be in the same way that a gay community can make marriage whatever they want it to be in an agnostic community and in a Buddhist community and in an Islamic community and in a Jewish community. Marriage is, is, is done, performed, viewed differently. But that's all under the umbrella, um, umbrella of marriage, of pair bonding and commitment. And Matt seems to think that the way that he views the world should be projected on everybody else, if not legislatively and legally, through cultural norms and, dare I say, Shaming people who don't want to do what he believes is correct, which starts moving us and inching us closer and closer to a Gilead situation. Now, when you look at Matt Walsh, if Josh can do this for the video here, put Matt Walsh in, uh, in, in Gilead, right? Put his face on one of the um, Handmaid's Tale people, right? At the little council there. Doesn't look out of place. Doesn't feel out of place. It's not a stretch because I think Matt Walsh would actually be happier in that environment. Interestingly enough, as you know, someone who, who attests to be um, a proponent of liberty and personal freedom. And it was just, it was, it was difficult to, to withstand it because the institution had already been weakened. So I agree with you there. Um, but my answer to that is to try to reinforce what marriage is, not to just give up on it entirely. And I, I still think you're left with this question of, like if marriage is not what I'm saying it is, then what, why do we even need it? What's the, I mean, you're saying it's a, it's a man-made institution, yes. but you're, but you're also it, like the way that you're pre presenting it, it's a, it's a, it's also, it's a totally meaningless institution. So no. They don't need it at all. No, it's such a poor argument, right? Well, if it's not what I want it to be, then it, what, it doesn't mean anything then. It doesn't mean anything to anybody now. It's like, that's not, that's a, that's a, that's a tear. That's just a shit argument. Like how can someone <laughs> build a, a, an audience like he has and that's, that's his level of intellect when he talks about challenging issues. 
is, well, if it's not what I want it to be, then it doesn't, then it shouldn't exist and it's nothing and it means nothing now. That's, that's, that's absurd. Oh, it's not meaningless because it means something to the people that get married. So it's just, it's just a subjective, symbolic thing. I mean, what? Yeah. It, so if you kind of what it is, look, there's a massive responsibility when you're married and when you have children to keep your family together and you raise and keep everybody happy and healthy. And there's great reward to that. Yeah. But it doesn't always work out. It's not, it's not a, it's people change. People are fucked up. It doesn't, it doesn't always work. And so I don't think it should be outlawed because 50% of the people fall apart. Just like, I don't think it has any effect whatsoever on a straight couple. If a gay couple decides that they want to make it official and that's what it is to them. It, it gives them a feeling that, that they're accepted and appreciated and that they're not discriminated against because they happen to be homosexual. So well, what you're articulating to me is the damage that's done by gay marriage to the institution of marriage. But how is it done? How is that because, in any way damaged straight people? Because we are making the institution meaningless. But it's not meaningless. <laughs> well, but you're it's just very saying, meaningful to the people that have it. Subjective, symbolic, and it's about your own personal feelings. Isn't it though? Well, no, I, I would say that it's not. It's, it's, well, if it's not subjective and it's not symbolic, it's, then... it's, it, it, it codifies and protects and uh, gives a name to a, a thing that actually exists, which is which are you know man woman couples creating people, creating creating babies, um, but not always, right? But, it, but that's still that's still the that's still the nature of the union. So, but what are the percentage of people today that are married that don't have children? I bet it's pretty high amongst heterosexuals. Probably. Is there something wrong with that? I think there is something wrong with that. I think it, it, there's something wrong with, <laughs> you know, getting married and saying, we're, just, we don't, we're not going to have any kids at all. But why is there something wrong with that? If someone's personal choice, well, why would that, why is it wrong that two people are like, you know, I am deeply committed to work and I don't want to sacrifice any of my career and I don't want to ruin a kid because I'm constantly at the office, but that's where I get deep satisfaction. And, and that's, that's what I'm focused on. And the, the woman says, that's great because I don't want children either. I really am yeah. attached to my interests and my career and what I like to do. That, that's not damaging your relationship with your wife and your family. It's, I, don't certainly, I certainly don't think of it as a threat to my marriage or my family. Yeah, it's, uh, it is a personal choice. Right, but, but shouldn't people be allowed to make those personal choices? Like, isn't that a fundamental <laughs> aspect of what it means to be American, to have that freedom? Well, oh. right, yeah, but right now we're not talking about what people are allowed to do. I'm not saying well, that. we're talking about marriage, gay marriage. Okay, that, we, were, we were just discussing straight couples who choose straight not couples to have kids. Choose, that's also a personal freedom issue, isn't right. it? Yeah, but, and I'm not saying that, that straight couples should be legally required to have kids, but I, you know, if you're asking me, do I think it's the right choice to just get married and choose not to have kids ever? I, I, I do not think that that's the right choice. It might, it's, their, it's their choice, but people can make choices that are wrong. Um, and you can but disagree. how is it wrong if they have a fulfilling and wonderful life together with that choice? If their, their thing is that they just want to have a bond between the two of them, to just like take it to the next yep. level, let everybody know. I mean, that's really, it keeps going in circles after this, but so cut it off there. But I look at this and I say, Joe hit the nail on the head and he keeps coming back to this. Isn't that a personal choice and, and freedom issue? And the answer is yes, absolutely. If you are a pro freedom individual, that means you're, you support gay marriage. It's an aspect of freedom. That is what it is. So either get with that fact or don't call yourself pro-freedom because it's bullshit. And I know that's uncomfortable for people to hear sometimes, but it is what it is. Marriage is a subjective, symbolic thing. Now there's legal pieces to it too, which Joe goes into in another part of this where it's like, yeah, if you want, you know, we talk about like when someone dies, the will, being able to see somebody in the hospital, like make decisions on their behalf. Um, those are all important, tangible aspects of marriage that I think if you think that gay people shouldn't be, have access to that, like Matt Walsh does, because he never even answered that. He like danced around that one too. Well, then we got a problem, right? But when we look at this and say, okay, like this is, this clearly isn't hurting anyone. It's allowing people to express themselves in a way that they feel is, uh, is, is healthy and appropriate for them, which is a, a part of American freedom. Then, then what's the problem? So when you see this, right, and you see like, oh, well, the, the Republicans are so reasonable. People like this make the decisions for the conservative movement. And while this is a minority position in a big way, with enough leverage, this kind of thought, right, can become pervasive. And then we end up in a really interesting problem. Now, do you, are you allowed and free to think this? Yes. 1000%. It's not illegal to think this and be anti-gay marriage. Do whatever you want to do. But 
embrace the fact that if you do that and you call yourself pro freedom, you're a f-ing hypocrite. And that's just is what it is. So if you enjoyed this clip from the politically homeless premium community on Patreon, then consider joining yourself, get involved in the conversation and help us create content just like this. We do a bonus episode every week that is sourced from the Patreon for the Patreon. We have a good time, a bunch of like-minded people being able to say what they want, say what they think, say what they feel, have communication with one another, dive into some really challenging topics. It's a great place. I think you'd love it. So check it out. There's a link on the screen. There's a link in the in the uh, caption or the, uh, the description of the video down there. You know what I'm talking about. Patreon.com slash politically homeless. Get your ass in there.